Over the past four years, God has worked in the lives of the senior class. He has stretched and molded us into laborers fit for the harvest. During the next few moments, we would like to share some specific testimonies of how God has changed our lives here at West Coast and challenged the next generation to continue for the cause of Christ. Well, the Lord has done so much in my life here at West Coast, but one of uh, the most amazing things He did was last year when I had the opportunity to preach the rally at one of the hunts. And uh, uh, while I was preaching, the kids were listening, but the, the best part was after I was done preaching, each of those age groups, just seeing the counselors and the kids praying and accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's, it's those moments where God shows me His power and how He can use me that fuel me with the passion to just continue in the ministry with my life. Each time, God brought me back to Him. And it was when I trusted in Him and just chose to depend on His strength that I was able to do what I needed to do. Dr. Getch preached a message about giving God the keys to your life, or keys to doors to your life. He said, "There's your life has a lot of doors, and it's up to you whether or not you're gonna allow God to have access to any doors in your life. It didn't take me very long to realize that I hadn't handed over all of my keys, um, but after that, that revival, um, God worked in my heart, and I gave him that key to the last door of my life, and, and I felt that God called me to stay here and to graduate from here. I remember hearing men like Adam Langston and John Jupp stand up and just be very transparent about how God had called them and given them a burden for a city. And they told about the struggles they faced and the great victories they had saw, and God began to work in my heart and give me a desire to one day go out and plant a church as well. In my flesh, I did not want to go on the bus ride. I did not want to help. And I was just thinking of all the time and effort that kind of commitment required. But I reluctantly agreed. And as I began working on the bus route, God began convicting my heart. God gave me that desire and that burden for the kids on those bus route. And my entire experience working there dramatically changed when I gave God my heart. The missions conference has been my favorite part here. And I wanted to serve God with my life in the areas that I wanted to, but I have never fully surrendered to God. In 2014, I surrendered to God to preach. My soon-to-be boyfriend, he wanted to go to India because he was, he was from India and he wanted to go back as a missionary. And honestly, that really terrified me. But uh, God just, one day in my dorm room, it was a random afternoon, and the Holy Spirit just really convicted me of uh, my lack of trust in God's leading for my life. And I finally just stopped fighting it and I said, okay God, if this is what you want, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. God had really been just speaking to me about being surrendered to missions and being completely surrendered to anything He would have for me. And um, I asked Him if, if He would want me to, to surrender to Him to show it to me in chapel the next day. And the next day, um, Brother Graham was speaking in chapel. Brother Graham got up and he said, instead of saying, I'll go if you want me to go, why not say, I'll stay if you want me to stay, otherwise I'm going. And I hit the altar as fast as I could. And just from that point on, just learning to surrender everything completely to Him, including missions. I know that those times where God has pushed me um, outside of my comfort zone have given me the opportunity to grow in my faith in Him. And so I think one of the greatest things looking back is just seeing how God has worked exceedingly abundantly above what I could have imagined. The preacher that night asked a question that stuck with me throughout my four years. And he said, you know, open eyes, everybody looking around. If you say that you would die for Christ, stand up right now. I got up to my feet and I thought, there's nothing I wouldn't do for Christ. And that night the preacher said, how dare you? How dare you say that you would die for Christ and you decide not to live for him daily? That just struck me and I remember making a decision that day to live every day for Christ. I have to make a daily choice to be content and I would say that's one of the main things that I have learned and what God has taught me and that's carried me on through every year that I've been here because God, He sends trials in your life and you have struggles but the more that I learn to be content in Him, that's what gets you through. I had the opportunity to teach a bus class and it was just amazing we had the opportunity to come over to the Walter Center uh, as it was being built and the teens got to pray and uh, ask God to provide for the Walter Center. It was something that was new to me uh, coming here after six months of being saved and just seeing all that God is doing on this campus and uh, all the things that God has taught me in my life. That was monumental, uh, just what God could do through a church and through a man that was wholly given to Him. The greatest moment of my college years is my, was my, my freshman year. It was at a student revival and I remember the, the theme was on eternity. And that night, I uh, talked to one of the preachers, 
and I already knew what I needed to do. And uh, that night I accepted the Lord as my personal savior. When I came, I had an idea of what God wanted me to do, but I was very confused and I was afraid and I was very unconfident. And throughout college, God has just reassured me time and time again, God's will for your life is a relationship with God. And um, if you're afraid about knowing what God's will is, just rest in God and have a relationship with Him and seek Him first and He'll show you. I'm really glad that um, God's love for me isn't based on how I perform and that He is always so consistent and dependable. And I am fully convinced um, just by seeing the difference that having a relationship with God and living by His principles can make um, in someone's life, that God really does give life more abundant. The example of just a real walk with God with the staff and with Pastor, with Dr. Getch, I remember just many times just walking in the dorm and seeing in the corner, just walking in late from work and seeing someone in the corner of the dorm praying. Examples like that really impacted me. During our corporate prayer meeting, I experienced with a closeness with God at that time in that prayer meeting that I never had before. And it made me want something that I didn't know I was missing. And through that, the Lord just started showing himself to me and answering my prayers. And I fell deeper and deeper in love with him through that. I think one of the hard things for me personally was coming from a godless environment to a place that actually loves the Lord. That changed my mentality, my mindset completely altogether. God has taught me to take the ministry serious, but not myself so serious. I was involved in a ministry here called Game On LA, and it's a ministry where a group of guys would uh, get together and uh, drive to LA on Saturdays and go soul winning. I was struck by the zeal of the college students as I went with them to Game On Pasadena. Uh, throughout my course here at West Coast Baptist College, I've seen that same zeal and love for the lost develop in my own heart. And uh, we saw uh, a lot of great victories during that time, but there was a lot of difficulties as well. And I remember my sophomore year getting the news that uh, Philip Jones and his family surrendered to plant a church in Pasadena. And just remembering the joy that that brought our team and the renewed passion that we then had uh, for Pasadena. And I was remembered of God's promise that he will build his church. There really hasn't been one testimony. I think just day by day, God knew what I needed for that day. That whenever I felt discouraged, he would send a friend my way. Whenever I started straying away from him, he would challenge me through a sermon. Whatever I really needed for that day, he was always there for me. And it was really a testament for God's day-by-day -day new grace. Brother Space was going into the, the thought that every trial and every feeling that we've ever felt of, of guilt or every emotional thought that Christ was made flesh for that specific reason. So that when we would pray to him, that Jesus Christ knew exactly how we felt. I remember as Brother Space was, was giving this lecture and he was telling us he began to weep. I remember that one time, that's when doctrine and studying doctrine became real to me. If I could say anything to underclassmen, it would be don't quit encouraging, don't quit believing, um, don't quit praying, just don't quit. The same God that called you here is the same God that can um, help provide for you to stay here and to graduate from here. You're making it to the finish line and completing is just one of the greatest feelings in the world and it's not because you did something great, it was because God worked through you. Don't miss out on what God has for you in your life. We need you to make it. Realize that he has bigger plans for us. Embrace those tests and those trials and even the failures and learn from them. Just soak it all up and do everything you can to learn as much as you can while you're here. Because one day, you're gonna be graduating and you're gonna wish you had done more. And I would advise all the underclassmen to choose friends who spend time with God. If you make knowing God your first priority, you're gonna do all right. Really pour your heart out um, into other people and invest in them. I always thought that when I become a senior, my walk with God would be uh, great, but you have to be intentional we got so busy here and there's so much to do. There's projects and classes and work, but a lot of times we let that get in the way of us, really spending time with God. If you allow yourself to get distracted, you will become discouraged and you will fail. So keep your eyes on the Lord. 
I want to thank Pastor for not only teaching us uh, how to live a biblical and balanced life, but also his example of living it as well. Thank you so much uh, for being faithful to preach the word and to live what you've preached. And to the, uh, the members of Lancaster Baptist Church, I want to thank you for welcoming us into your families, me especially, and giving us a home away from home. Pastor, thank you for having that testimony of walking by faith year after year. Thank you so much for being willing to let God stretch you. Thank you for being faithful and investing in the future generation. For everything, just for, for having an eternal mindset. Your ministry and your church is doing so much in our country by training up laborers. Not only do they show trust and belief in God, but they show it to us when it's hard for us also to believe that God's going to provide for our school bill or He's going to provide for our family. We see a church that's showing that on a regular basis. I just thank you for treating us as family. Thank you for allowing us to serve alongside you. It's been a privilege. Thank you for what you've invested into my life and to the lives of the many thousands before me. You never know what one conversation will have uh, an impact in one of our lives. So I would say just continue no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in ministry. Do what God has called you to do. Thank you for always being there to cheer us on and also for praying for us. It means a lot. Just being willing in there in every, all the busy schedules and everything else that goes on in Lancaster to um, develop relationships personally with us. You don't really see the immediate fruit or results of the investment you put in, but I'm excited to just see how God is going to use us. But you guys had a part of that. Thank you so much for cultivating an environment that pushes us out of our comfort zone. Well, all the students here, a lot of them come from very, very far away. Um, and I know a lot of our members here really help treat us like family and make us feel at home. Someone once said, the greatest investment is investing in one's life. And I would just say thank you for investing in my life.